Hey guys, Corey with Palmetto Battery Pros, and today we're going to be doing a lithium conversion on a 1999 Club Car Carryall. It's also going to be the same for similar year Club Car DS. We will be installing the Bolt Energy USA 51 volt 105 amp hour mini battery with the professional installation kit. So stick around and we'll go through it step by step. And I will quickly go through everything that comes in the professional installation kit. But this is the battery and it comes with terminal protectors, comes with a magnetic Bluetooth reader. And also this is the new state of charge meter, which uh, has the enlarged state of charge percentage. Uh, it's also color coded. The kit comes with an onboard charger. And this is the piece that connects the charger to the battery. This is the AC port replacement and cover plate. Bolt includes the 48 to 12 volt reducer for all of your 12 volt accessories. And this is a wiring harness that makes it really easy to connect to your cart. Cart specific mounting brackets. Also included is Bolt Energy's 400 amp high output solenoid. It's new two gauge positive and negative cables. Bolt also provides a bag of goodies. It has user manuals, uh, installation guide, uh, zip ties, extra eyelets, stickers. That's a really nice touch there. And lastly, they provide the lead acid battery pullers to get your old lead acid batteries out. All right, our cart is off and we've gone ahead and disconnected and pulled our lead acid batteries and cleaned the battery compartment out. The first thing we'll do is go ahead and get rid of the lead acid charge receptacle. So the black and gray runs to your OBC, which we'll bypass here in a second and then the red went to your uh, lead acid batteries. So you can go ahead and cut these guys, disconnect this and cut these, cut this one right here. We'll be dis, uh, discarding all of that. There are three screws on the back of the charge receptacle. One, two, and three. Go ahead and remove those three so you can remove this back plate. And once you do that, you come around to the front using your Phillips head screwdriver, one, two, three, four, remove. Once you get the new receptacle in with the cover plate, you can use some self-tapping screws to secure it to the cart here, and then the provided screws to attach the AC port to the cover plate. Okay, so in the older DSs, um, this part of the frame here is probably going to be pretty worn out. So I did use some 90-degree uh, brackets right here, and I also laid my bolt bracket down, and I made my holes coincide with these slots. And I put my second one here. Now I have my brackets in place, and I have all four of my mounting hardware uh, hand tight. So they will slide forward and back. So as I set the battery in there, I can adjust and then pull the battery back out. And when I like where it is, I tighten these down. So we went ahead and dropped the battery in and we used the provided hardware to secure it down to the mounting brackets. And this mount is very solid, no wiggle room. I mean, you could pick the card up with this battery. Next, I fabricated this piece of metal. And I put it down in here, mounted it down to the frame, and I'm going to use self-tapping screws to mount my onboard charger and my 12-volt reducer. So I'll go ahead and explain how the charger and the 12-volt reducer hooks up outside of the cart. This is the 15-amp onboard charger, and we will be connecting the charger input side to the charge receptacle replacement. So when we plug in the extension cord, it will activate the onboard charger. The green wire is the charger output, and we are gonna connect the charger connection piece here, and then we will run the blue and brown wires with eyelets to the battery post. The brown goes to positive, and the blue goes to negative. This is our 30 amp 12 volt reducer. 
and it comes with the wiring harness and I will quickly go through all the wires. The yellow and black is our 48 volt supply so we're going to extend these and run them to the battery post to give our reducer 48 volts. The red is our 12 volts out and we will be running this to our fuse block. We will extend and run the light green up to the key switch and we're going to put it on the cold side so when you turn your cart on the 12 volt supply will activate and the dark blue we're not going to use it is for a constant 12 volt supply to maintain memory in the stereo but we do not have one so we will just be capping this off and not using it all right let's go ahead and talk about our 12 volt supply and what i did was was i ran the red from the 12 volt reducer uh, wiring harness here. I ran the red to the positive post on our fuse block and I grounded the negative post. You can either ground it at the battery terminal or you can ground it at the B negative on the controller. So now we're getting 12 volts in and I have all of my 12 volt uh, items here, which is mostly just lights and turn signals. And using the bolt supplied zip ties, I went ahead and did some wire management so there's really not a great place in these uh, DSs or carry-alls to hide all your wires. I hid some, zip-tied up underneath the battery and back up under here. But you just want to make sure that none of the wires are hanging down below the frame because I've seen them get pulled out before. Here are our main battery cables uh, that came with the cart. Uh, we're, this is the negative and it runs to the OPC, which we'll be bypassing here in a second. We'll go ahead and cut it here and discard the old cable. So in regards to the OBC, we went ahead and cut everything that was going up to the charge receptacle. We cut the grounds that were to the B negative. Um, we cut and capped the other wires out of the harness. So we did take the yellow and we grounded it. So that's really the only thing you need to do to bypass this OBC. And this is the yeah, same yellow from the OBC that we cut and uh, we ended up running it here it is right here coming out of the main harness so this went to the obc we cut it and extended it and we now grounded it at the b negative on our controller so now we could take our 10 millimeter and go ahead and remove the obc completely out of the cart all right you can go ahead and disregard your obc you don't need any of this and the same goes with the positive. Um, here's the positive cable. And you can see around back, it goes to this side of the solenoid. So we'll take it off the solenoid here. We're going to be replacing the solenoid here shortly anyway. So we'll discard the main positive cable. Next, go ahead and take a photo of your solenoid for reference. And we'll go ahead and start disconnecting this solenoid and put the new bolt one up in its place. And we'll go ahead and talk about the solenoid real quick and just give you a good overview. The yellow goes to the B positive post on the controller. And the main positive cable that we swapped out, this is going from the solenoid here to the positive post on our battery. On our big post here, we do have the red, green. And on the small post, we have the white, black, and the red coming to our small post here. On our big post, we have our yellow. And again, we have our diode in place. And please make sure that the positive side, which is right here, is going to the positive side there. And here's your ground negative side. And you can see the black wire here is black. So this is the ground. So you want to make sure you have your diode in the right place. So of course, our B negative, uh, we grounded the yellow from our OBC here. And then we have our main negative cable that runs to the negative post in our battery. These are to the B negative. We also had two additional wires that were on our negative post, on our B negative, on our OEM controller, which is the uh, white, red, and the purple. So we have all those grounded here. We also grounded our 12-volt fuse block here. So now we have all of our grounds there. Also, this guy down here is a voltage reducer. It's the OEM reducer. And basically, I'm just going to delete this and use the 12-volt reducer that comes with the bolt kit.
So this is the light green from our 12 volt reducer wiring harness and we've extended it and ran it up to the dash and to the key switch. And we will be putting it to the blue wire, which is the cold side of the key switch. So when the customer turns his key switch on, his 12 volt supply will be activated. And I did run it down and along with other cables all the way down and secured it, made sure it wasn't underneath the frame of the cart. We also went ahead and put our voltage meter in place. And to do that, we used a two and one sixteenths hole saw or two inch and widen it out a little bit. Um, make that perfect hole. We slid this in, use the bracket on the back to secure it to the cart. And then we plugged it in and then you can't really see it down there, but it's right down here. We plugged it into the wiring harness, which runs back to the battery. And we plugged it into the display port. We also plugged in the Bluetooth meter, which is BT port right here. And it does have a magnet on the top, which we just secured it right here to the battery. Okay, now that we finished everything up here and have everything tight and secure, we can go ahead and put the panel back in place. So real quick, I'll tell you what um, gets hooked up to the post here. And you go from smallest to biggest, biggest touching the, the post. And uh, smallest is going to be the 48 volt supply for our 12 volt reducer. Next is the onboard charger connection piece, which we plugged into our charger output wire. And the biggest cable is our main positive cable, which runs to our solenoid. Same thing on the negative side. The smallest is our 48 volt supply for our 12 volt reducer. Next is the onboard charger connection piece. And last is our main negative cable, which we replaced and ran to the B negative on our controller. Once you have everything hooked up, you can go ahead and put your terminal protectors in place. This will prevent cross uh, post arcing. Okay, let's go ahead and test cart operation. I'm going to go ahead and turn the battery on. It will illuminate the on off button and the voltage meter will turn on. The switch is on and we're just going to make sure that we have cart operation, which we do. So now we need to max charge this battery before we test it. So to do that, we're going to use our heavy duty extension cord, 10 or 12 gauge. Go ahead and open up your AC port, plug your extension cord in. And this will activate the onboard charger. And once the battery reaches full charge, the charger will shut off and we'll be good to test drive this vehicle. All right, the battery is max charged and I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. So I was very impressed on how well the new 51 volt, 105 amp hour bolt energy battery fit down into this tight space. Uh, it's going to fit perfectly in a DS and the carry-all. It's also going to fit in some of the older club car precedents without having to move the center, uh, you know, trim and controller, solenoid, everything. So really stoked on that. The installation came out very well and it looks really good too. So I think the customer is going to be really happy. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. And uh, if you'd like to order one of these batteries, we are a authorized sales and service provider for Bolt Energy. So please give us a call weekdays 9 to 5. If you have questions or would like to go ahead and order one, we can help you out with that. You can also shop online at palmettobatterypros.com. And as always, please hit that like and subscribe button. We have more lithium installation and unboxing videos coming out in the near future. So we hope to see you next time. We appreciate you watching. Thanks, y'all.